Here are 10 secrets to cruising that you probably or maybe didn't know. Number one, did you know that cruise ships have morgues on board? Okay, I feel like most people do know this one by now, but in case you don't, they do. And given the average age of many cruise passengers and the long duration of some cruises, it really is a necessity. Now, while having a morgue on a cruise ship is not something that most cruise passengers want to even think about, it's a part of cruise life that is kept discreetly out of sight. So what happens when someone dies on board? Well, I can tell you because I've unfortunately had it happen on two of my sailings. Crew members are trained to handle such situations with the utmost respect and care and discretion ensuring that any unfortunate event on board is managed smoothly without impacting other passengers' experiences. And in fact, if a passenger dies on your cruise, a lot of times you probably won't even know. I only knew about the two that happened on my sailings because the families posted about it later on our Facebook group for that particular cruise. Now, if you hear an emergency call in the middle of the night, that's never good news. Ships have emergency calls for a variety of reasons, and they're usually pretty discreet about what they need but any kind of announcement like Alpha or Bravo in the middle of the night is usually bad news. Typically that means a passenger is having a severe medical emergency. And if that is the case to where they have to do a shipwide call, the outcome is sometimes unfortunately death. And if that passenger passes away, their body is stored in the morgue, which is usually on those lower levels of the ship. Then at disembarkation, a coroner or a funeral home will be there ready to greet the ship. And from what I've heard from families unfortunately impacted by this happening, the cruise lines usually handle this really, really well. They privately and discreetly escort the families off the ship first, along with the body. So they do that before the chaos of everyone else disembarking the ship at the same time. Number two, hidden fees. While cruises are often marketed as being all inclusive, there are a ton of extra charges that you might not be aware of. Things like specialty dining, beverages outside of the basics like lemonade, water, and tea, gratuities, and even some onboard activities. These things can add up quickly and you can rack up charges before you know it. Now, one example is food. While the main dining rooms and buffets are usually always included in your fare, most of the cruise lines have additional specialty restaurants that require an additional fee. And as I mentioned, those basic drinks are included free. But anything else like soft drinks or alcohol beverages are almost always going to come at an additional cost. Either you buy the beverage package or you buy them a la carte. And that also goes for specialty coffees. Then there are gratuities. Some cruise lines like Virgin Voyages, they include gratuities, but they're the rare exception. Most of the other cruise lines automatically add daily gratuities to your onboard account. And it runs around $16 per person per day, although those fees can be higher if you have a fancier stateroom category like a balcony or a suite. So before going on a cruise and not budgeting to spend any money, make sure you understand it isn't as all-inclusive as you might think. Number three, early booking discounts are not always the best. Now look, it's great right now to book cruises really far in advance because sailing demand is through the roof. And if you want to get on the certain cruise, you need to book it soon before it sells out. But booking far in advance doesn't always guarantee you the best price. Cruise lines often release last minute deals and special promotions to fill unsold cabins. And this can mean significant discounts or things like free onboard credit or other perks. Holland America Line recently announced a standby program where you can basically cruise standby like you would on a flight. So it pays to be flexible with your dates and to keep an eye on price drops. There are different websites that help you track cruise prices and those can be very helpful as well. And sometimes it's prudent to book a rate, especially if you're booking really far in advance that has a low price guarantee. So you can keep an eye on the fare and if that price does drop, then you get refunded for the difference. So your patience could really pay off. Number four is cabin upgrades or what I like to call cabin upsells. Cabin upgrades are a bit of a gamble. Now, back in the old days of cruising, cabin upgrades were pretty common. Loyal cruisers were rewarded with free and legitimately free upgrades in stateroom cabin categories. Those days, however, are mostly gone. You might find an actual free legit cabin upgrade here and there, but those are pretty much long behind us. And when you get an upgrade offer, it might not actually be worth the extra cost. What happens is you book a cruise and usually one to three months out from your sailing, the cruise line will send you an email and sometimes they'll give you a call, but usually it's email. And that email will sound very exciting and enticing, offering you a cabin upgrade. But make sure you look at the cost because 99% of the time there's going to be a price associated with that and it may not be a good deal. And it also may not be worth it to you. Personally, I don't mind interior stateroom cabins, so I'm not gonna pay four or $500 to upgrade to an ocean view. 
So consider what's important to you, how much time you're actually gonna spend in your stateroom and look at the costs associated with any upgrade offer that you get from the cruise lines because it may not be a good deal. Now, that being said, sometimes you can get a smoking deal. I've gotten some really great upgrades. I once got a $40 upgrade on Royal Caribbean through the Royal Up program from an interior to a spacious ocean view, and it was well worth it. So if you do get an upgrade offer, check it out. And if it's a good deal, don't wait. Book it as soon as possible because it will sell to someone else who wants it. Number five, onboard medical costs. The good news is if you have a medical situation or an emergency on a cruise ship, you're covered. There are full medical teams on board to take care of you if that happens. However, make note that medical costs on board can be extremely high. Cruise ship doctors and medical facilities, they're convenient, but they do come with that hefty price tag. And even a minor ailment, something like seasickness, can result in a significant bill of several hundred dollars. And of course, more serious medical issues can cost thousands. It's critical to have travel insurance that covers your medical expenses while you're traveling and out at sea. Personally, I use Allianz. I have an annual plan that covers me and my children for every trip we take throughout the year. It's a lot cheaper and gives me better coverage than what I could get through the cruise lines for individual cruises. Because those medical expenses, hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but if you do, you can get hammered with a massive bill. I cruised once with my sister and her family and her little daughter has eczema. And when she jumped in that cruise ship pool and that salt water hit her eczema, she was in a lot of pain. And unfortunately, my sister didn't have her daughter's eczema cream with her, so she had to go visit the medical facility on board. Thankfully, they had what she needed, but she got a bill that was about $400 for a basic visit and some cream. It was a little outrageous. So the takeaway here is make absolutely certain that you pack a basic first aid kit with essentials, things like band-aids, pain relievers, seasickness medication, and of course, any prescription medications you might need, even those that you don't take daily, so you can hopefully avoid any unnecessary visits to the onboard doctor. Number six, excursion markups. Excursions booked through the cruise lines are often marked up significantly. Now, booking directly through the cruise line, it has some great benefits. It's super convenient, and you're guaranteed that ship will not leave without you if your tour runs late but that comes at a cost. If you wanna save money, you can research and book your own tours, sometimes the identical tours, independently on your own to save money and potentially enjoy a more personalized experience. Websites and apps like Viator, I'll drop my link below, offer a ton of excursion options with reviews from fellow travelers. So you can make sure it's actually a good excursion before you invest your money in it. It's almost always going to be a lot cheaper. You can also find local tour operators who often offer the same or even better experiences at port at a fraction of the cost. Just be mindful of your time because if you do it on your own, you've got to make it back to the ship on time. It will not wait for you. Number seven, duty-free shopping. Duty-free shopping is not always the bargain it seems. While cruise lines boast about their duty-free shops, the prices are not always the best deal. Items like alcohol, tobacco, and luxury goods are often advertised as tax-free to try to woo you in but that does not mean that they're actually cheaper. Make sure you compare prices online before ever making a purchase, especially on board a cruise ship because things are so marked up to ensure that you're actually getting a good deal. Sometimes, a lot of times, you can find the same items cheaper on land, in the ports, or even at home. So be a savvy shopper, do your homework, and avoid overpaying for something just because it's duty-free. Number eight, crew tips. Cruise ship crew members often rely on tips to supplement their income. And while gratuities are sometimes included in your bill, extra tips for exceptional service are always appreciated. The crew works really, really hard for long hours, they're away from home, and they don't make a lot of money. So a little generosity can go a long way by tipping on top of those included gratuities. My first few cruises, I thought included gratuities meant I didn't have to tip on top of that. And while you don't have to, it's certainly something that's nice to do, and I personally do try to do. Number nine, beverage packages. Beverage packages on cruise lines can be a good deal, but not always. You have to make sure you drink enough to make it worth your while. Make sure before you buy a drink package that you calculate how much you think you will realistically drink purchasing that package. Also take into consideration how many port days are on your itinerary. Why? Because if you're going to be off the ship most of the day on a port day, you're not on board to enjoy the drinks anyway. If you're only gonna be on board for a few hours at night and then you're tired from your port day, you're gonna be sleeping anyway, you may not get to enjoy and take advantage of your drink package at all. So if you have an itinerary with a ton of port days, you might wanna actually skip the drink package. 
You also have to be careful because with the drink package, what happens is a lot of times we end up overindulging. I am not a big drinker. I drink a little bit of soda here and there and coffee drinks are more my vice. Being a la carte for specialty coffees, which can rack up really fast, I find that whenever I have any type of beverage package, I find myself pounding away sugary, high calorie, unhealthy drinks, including specialty coffees and alcohol beverages and soda that I would never do at home, which is not healthy. And I do that because I wanna get my money's worth off of the drink package. So those drink packages are not always a good deal and they're always not good for you. So make sure you think about those things because you can always just buy your drinks one at a time. Now, if you're a super heavy drinker, go for it. It's a great deal. But for everybody else, really do your math. And number 10, disembarkation chaos. Look, disembarkation from a cruise ship can be utter chaos because everyone is getting off at the same time. They're rushing you off so they can turn the ship and welcome new cruisers on board. A lot of cruisers think they have to check their bags, meaning they pack their bags the night before, they leave it outside the stateroom door with a tag, the cruise line picks it up, and then after they disembark, like you would on an airplane, you go and pick up your bag and go about your merry way. Now that's a great option for people who aren't pressed for time, who have mobility issues, or don't feel like schlepping a heavy bag around. For me personally, and a lot of cruisers though, that's not always the best option. What some people don't realize is that you can get off the ship a lot easier and a lot faster if you do what's called self-assist, which simply means you take your bags off on your own. I try to pack light so I can do self-assist to make things easier. And it's so nice not having to pack my bags the night before, put them out, and then to have to wait to retrieve them later. I'm also not running the risk of my bag being out of my sight where things could potentially get lost, damaged, or stolen. I also have to fly home after a cruise and I don't wanna waste time waiting for my bag to come out because it's not always out when you're off the ship and you have to sit around and wait. So while I don't like lugging my bags around, it's so much easier and I don't have to wait for my group to be called at a certain time to get off the ship. I can simply walk off that ship with my bags in hand whenever I want before that final disembarkation time. And there you have it cruisers, top secrets that some cruisers don't know about. I hope you found them helpful. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Safe travels and happy cruising.